Okay, uh, unit seven, day four, exponential growth and decay. And my learning targets here, I can model growth and decay problems using exponential function, um, as well as make predictions. So we're going to write the function, sort of like we did with the table before. We're going to do the same thing here. So uh, the Fort Wayne Math Store, pretty uh, popular store, expects to sell 100 pie t-shirts in the uh, initial week of its release. Um, it also expects to receive and sell an average of 10 more per week. So every week it's going to sell 10% more than the previous week. So we need to make a table of how many shirts will be sold at the store in the first three weeks. Then we want to kind of look at the pattern and, and make an equation out of it, um, which is what we did. We did this before um, on, on the first day, on day one. Uh, use this predicted number of shirts sold in the ninth week. So you need to figure out what the ninth week is. First off, if it's going to be 10% uh, more every week, we sold 100 in the first one. If I want to add 10% to that, and I can figure out what 10% is and add it back to 100, or the fast way of doing that would be multiply by 1.1 because it's a 10% increase. And if you remember, you know, 10% increase, 1 means to keep what you got. The point 0.1 means a 10% increase. So we want to keep what we got plus more. So I'm going to do 100 times times 1.1. And I get 110. And I'll take that times 1.1. And I get 121. Take that times 1.1. And I got 133.1. Uh, yeah, 0.1 shirt. You know, basically 133 shirts for right now. But um, I want to skip forward to the ninth week. I don't want to spend all the time. Um, I don't want to spend all this time finding the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. I want or eighth. I want to go straight to the ninth. So. What's your initial value? Remember, a, b to the x. A is initial value. B is how much, how it's changing. So the a on this, on my initial value, is 100. Okay, so we're going to sell 100, at zero weeks at the very beginning, and then my growth factor is 1.1 because it's going up 10%. So a 10% increase um, every uh, week. So on this one, if I want to find the ninth week, okay, plug nine in. So I'm going to take 100. And then parentheses 1.1 raised to the ninth power. So it looks like I'm selling 235.79, we'll say 236 shirts. So 236 shirts. Um, each year, the math club's enrollment increases by 30% because uh, it's getting so popular. And uh, if the club has 45 members this year, how many members would expect to enroll five years from now? So we don't have to make a table here. We can say, what's the initial value? Well, the initial value, it has 45 members right now. And then it goes up by 30%, an increase of 30%. Well, that's a 1.3. Okay, and if I want to know five years now, plug a 5 in there. So I got 45, 1.3 to the fifth power. And I got 167.08. So basically, we'll say 167.08. But... 167 as you enroll, you can't have 0.08 of a person. Um, you have $1,000 to invest. Suppose you want to invest it for 18 years. Now you're going off to college, or you know, if you're becoming an adult, what do you want to do now? Um, how much money will you invest, um, or how much will your investment be worth at 6.25 annual interest? So at the end of the year, 6.25% uh, is added to it. Well, what's my initial value? 1000 of that $1,000. And then at the uh, uh, 6.25 increase, percent increase, that's 1.625. Sorry, 1.0625, because what I had a 62.5% increase. So 1.0625, remember, move that decimal two places, so it'd be a 0 0.0625, plus you keep what you had. You should get what you started with back with a 1. Now, that's for 18 years, so take it to the 18th power. So 1,000. 1.0625 to the 18th power. You think, boy, is this going to be that much money? I mean, I'm just gaining 6%. 6% is pretty good, especially after 18 years. You've almost tripled your investment. You're 2977. So 2,977 and 97 cents. Um, if they ever give you money, round it in your penny. That's kind of the, the general rule, the easiest way of doing it. Um, so yeah, you're, you tripled your investment. By doing nothing, just put $1,000 in and not touching it for 18 years, you triple it. So maybe if you can find more than 1000 get more than 1000 um, So someday when you get older and you have children, um, try to save a big chunk of money and put it away for them. And then when they graduate, if they want to go to college, they'll have some money for it.
Um, uh, the Fort Wayne Math Store also sells theta t-shirts. Theta is just how you, uh, if you remember from geometry, it's how you measure an angle. You know, so um, x is typically a length and theta is typically an angle. The manufacturer plans to sell 500 in the initial week and expects to um, increase 5% each week. However, sales decrease at 5% each week. So it was expected, but it didn't. So sales actually decreases 5% every week. So use a table. Now remember, when I decrease 5%, um, I want to know how much I kept. So if I kept, if I lost 5%, I'm going to keep 95%. So take 500 times 0.95. I got 475. That's a 5% decrease. Okay. Um, if I just took it times 0.05, it'd be a terribly small number. If I took it times 0.05, yeah, I'd have 25 the next week. That's not that's not a 5% decrease. That's a 95% decrease. Okay. So 475 times 0.95. So 451.25. Do it again. 428.68. I'm just speeding things up a little bit here. I didn't put that in my calculator, but now I use a, use a table to write an equation. My initial value is 500. What's the thing I multiplied in my calculator every time? 0.95. And then X would be the week um, for whichever week it is. And then um, use, it, use it to predict when the sales will reach only one shirt per week. Well, let's do this. Let's, again, we're just predicting here. We're not going to get the, the perfect. We're just trying to look ahead. Let me graph that. So let's graph 500.95 to the x power. And when I graph this, what am I looking for? Um, this is a weird window. Let me do this. I'll just go back to the standard window. Um, so what's going on here, and you may not even see this on the graph because my y-intercept is 500. This is 10. So that's off the graph. And how many weeks will it take? Well, after three weeks, I'm still selling 478. So I want to know when I get to 1. So I have to go pretty far over. So let me push window. Um, my x min, well, x represents the weeks. I'll put that at zero. This one, maybe I'll just pick 200. Maybe 200 weeks later, we'll still be selling shirts. The y min, y represents the number of shirts. Well, zero is the minimum number of shirts I can sell. And I started with 500. So the maximum I need to show is 500. So let's graph that. And at what point does this y value get down to one? Well, a quick way of doing that, a couple ways, but the fastest way is probably push trace. So it says after 100 weeks, you're still selling about three shirts. Because when X is 100, so I got to keep going. I want to know and go over until this Y is about one, almost exactly one, right about there. Okay, so somewhere between the 119th and the 121st. So let's just, you actually type in, I'll type in 120. Where am I at? Eh, it's about 106 shirts. So um, after 120 weeks, about one, but then after that, it's actually less than one, but we'll say somewhere around 120. We'll say X about 120, 121, somewhere in there. So again, we're just predicting. So around the 120, 121 part is what, after that many weeks, we only saw one shirt a week. Okay, let's flip this over. Backside, a virus has invaded your favorite, um, mountain fishing lake. So currently there are an estimated 1,800 fish in the lake. The Fish and Game uh, Department has determined that the fish population will decrease 25% per week if we don't do anything about it. Um, so first off, how many fish are left um, after six weeks? Well, let's just, um, let's just write the model here. So the initial value is 1,800 and we're going to lose 25%. It means we're going to keep 75%. So 0.75, and then I'm going to put a, well, I'll just put a 6 in here right now. Type that in the calculator, you get 320.36, so basically 320 fish after 6 weeks. That's, you were at 1,800, now you're at 320. You're losing your fish pretty fast. Um, when will there be no fish? So let's, let's graph that guy and take a look at it. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change to 1,800, and then in parentheses, 0.75 <clears throat> to the x. Um, let's see, my X min, um, I imagine, you know, if after six weeks we're this low, we probably may have to try 100. So I'm thinking 100 is probably the most number of weeks. And then my Y max, my Y min, so 1800 is my starting value, so I made that the, the highest my, my Y goes. I want to find out, you know, theoretically when there are no more fish. 
um, well, theoretically, will I ever hit zero? Okay, and this one's never, theoretically, because there's an asymptote. So theoretically, you know, theoretically by the equation, there's going to be at least one fish always, um, and then a half a fish and a fourth of a fish. So that doesn't really make sense. But in reality, how many weeks? So let's trace this guy. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, at what point am I um, below one? Let's say that. Let's say when do I hit below one? So it looks like, well, here we could probably round that up to one still. So one fish, one fish. Maybe right there we fell below. So after 28, after 29 weeks roughly, so we'll say about 29 weeks, there weren't any fish left. Okay. Uh, suppose you invest, invest $10,000 in a plot of land but fail to check the value for 10 years. Your investment has depreciated, so it's gone down. So for some reason, nobody wants this land anymore. Uh, four and a half percent for per year. How much is your investment worth after those ten years? Well, your initial value was ten thousand dollars. You lost. You lost four point five percent. So move that decimal twice. That's point oh four five. Then subtract from one. So that's point nine five five. You're keeping ninety five and a half percent. And then we want to know after ten years. So type this in the calculator. So now that $10,000 plot is only worth about $6,310 now. Uh, let's see. Given these examples, or given the following equations, decide if the, it is growth or decay, and then determine the percent increase or decrease. So remember, if a number is greater than 1, so this one is greater than 1, so that's growth. Uh, this one's less than 1, so that's decay. Greater than 1, growth. And when it's growth, the number more than 1, so it's 18, that's an 18% increase. Now 58, you kept 58%, that means you lost 42, so 42, 42% decrease, that's a decrease. And then here, anything above 1, so that'd be a 6.75% increase. Okay. Um, Half-life, half-life, and this is, uh, you can also do doubling life too, you know, that doubling time that they sometimes call it. So um, phosphorus, 32, and they, they use this sometimes for carbon dating and stuff like that. Uh, they look at chemicals and compounds and um, how fast they decompose. Um, like carbon typically leaves our body. If you're alive, you have carbon in you. And the moment you die, the carbon begins leaving, but it's pretty slow. Um, so let's say phosphorus has a half-life of 14.3 days. Uh, how much of a 50 milligram sample remains after 84 days? Okay, so... Kind of the same setup. I'm going to go with what we started with. So we started with 50 milligrams. Now, when it says half-life, uh, think of it as how long does it take to lose half? So we're going to lose half. Now, this is every 14.3 days. So if I put 14.3 up here, or if it's 14.3 days, I want that to be a 1, because I want it to be one cycle of half, you know, cutting it in half. Um, I got 84 days, so that's how many of these half cycles? Well, to find out, divide it. So 84 divided by 14.3 tells me how many times I need to take half of this. It's not going to be an exact number. Well, you could actually do a shortcut by making that your exponent, because this up here is how many cycles, so number of cycles. That's the number of cycles. So this is my exponent right here, so I'm going to take 50. So 50, and I want to do half cycles, but I need to do it 84 out of 14.3 times, because that's how many cycles it is. And I've got 0.85. So 0.85, um, let me stop there, milligrams. So I started with 50 milligrams, I'm down to 0.85, because 84 divided by 14.3, that's almost six cycles. I'm going to cut in half six times. Half of, 20, uh, half of 50 is 25, half of that is 12 and a half keep cut it in half, well, I, I did that six times, there's not a lot left, okay, but the number of half cycles and the number of times I need to have it, have it, have, with a V, that is your exponent, okay, um, iodine, and if it's a doubling time, um, then you'd put a two in here, and then days divided by what a cycle, a doubling cycle is, so iodine 123 has a half life of 13.2 days, here's my initial value, 45. I'm going to have it how many times? Well, after five hours, that's not even a full half cycle. I'm not going to have it once, but 
it's five hours out of the 13.2, which is a half cycle. So, you know, if I took five divided by 13.2, I'm not going to have it even one time. You know, cut in half even one time. So this is going to be more than 45 still. Um, I'm sorry, um, half of 45, but 24 and a half. It's going to be more than 24 and a half because I'm not, even, I'm not even doing it one time. Um, but if I type that in the calculator, you get 34.61 milligrams. So basically for, for half-life, it's y equals your initial value and then one-half to the x divided by, I'll put hl for half-life, whatever that half-life is. So this was 13.2, that's what I put in the bottom. 14.3, uh, that's what you put in the bottom. So half-life. You know, every compound has a different half-life, so the number that goes on the bottom there is going to be different. 